This video will provide exercises on folding and data types within Haskell. Okay, so how this video works is just like the last video on list exercises. At first I will give you a description of the problem, then you can pause the video and after that I will talk about the solution of the problem. Okay, so let's start. Create a function ref that reverses a list. This of course isn't too hard to do, but I want you to do this with one fold. Whether you use fold R or fold L is up to you. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, so let's look at the solution. This can be done with one fold L. What do we do here? Well, we go through the list and here, of course, the order in which we do things is important, which is why we use fold L. We want to start with the first element and then always prepend it to our accumulator. So the first element will be the first one to be prepended. Since all the other ones that come after it are also prepended, then the first element becomes the last. And this logic works for all the uh, other elements in that list too. Now, you might see something funny here. We could have used partial function application if ACC and X would be in a different order. Uh, well, not in a different order, but just in the opposite order where we had X ACC. Then we could have used partial function application here. So since that problem actually arises more often than not, there is a function that does that for you. It's called the flip function. And you, if you have a binary function that um, has arguments in the wrong order, then you can use this flip function with partial function application. Um, well, in order to have a nicer way of defining a function, I don't know about that. Um, I would actually prefer this way of writing the function since here it is clear what is being done. The flip really ob obfuscates what is happening. But sometimes you see this in Haskell programs and I just want to explain to you uh, well, what this flip function does and what it's used for. Okay. The next exercise is create a function prefixes that returns all the prefixes of a given list. So here in the example we see that the whole list is also part of the prefixes. Again, do this with a fold. Don't do this with uh, pattern matching or anything. But you can define a help function if you want. But again, the, the main uh, sort of functionality should come from a fold. Okay. Pause the video now. Okay, so let's look at the solution. This can be done with a fold right. And again, the order of elements matters here. So what are we actually doing? Let's ignore this map term uh, right here. And let's only focus on the list containing only the X prepended to something. What is happening here? Well. What we want to do is we want to go through the list in reverse and always add the element we're at. Because we know that the prefixes end with every single element we have in that list, right? So there is one prefix that ends with the last element of the list and one prefix that ends with the second to last um, element of that list and so on and so forth. So we create a list or we, we have some list or accumulator that we always put these ending values in. And the map term does nothing but take that element and prepend it to all the prefixes we already have in that accumulator. Thus, we build all the prefixes from the last element to the first element. Okay. So exercise three is a bit more involved. What you have to write here is a function Lagrange that does interpolate or that generates an interpolation polynomial in the Lagrange form. Okay, so what's the task at hand? You are given a data set or a set of data points with an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. This is the list of uh, float tuples that we have in the type signature. Now you have to return a function big L of x that 
uh, gets this x at as its argument. So the float argument you see uh, down there in the type signature, the first float argument, that is this x in the big x function. And the big, uh, not big x function, big L function. And that big L function is defined as a sum of this yj, lj, uh, of these y, uh, yj, lj uh, terms. And lj is, again, a function um, that creates a product term. Now, you should think about how to create the sum and this product. You have basically two things to do over the set of data points. So as a little tip, it might be helpful to define LJ as one folding and the sum as another folding. Okay, so let's try to do this and pause the video now. Okay, so let's look at the solution of this task. This solution might be a bit daunting, but we will go through it step by step and look at what definitions we actually try to achieve with each step. So, as I said, it makes sense to uh, create those sums as one folding and the products as another folding. So, the folding we have right here, the fold L, is that sum that uh, this big L constitutes as. Of course, the starting value for a sum in a fold should be zero since, well, we don't want to add to some constant. It should be zero. And then we can just build this sum by doing the accumulator plus that y l j x term. Now, in this case, I call it l x j because, of course, we can't do this uh, weird renaming of this l term. But, well, that's that's not that important, right? So now we can look at how those lj terms actually function. Now, you have to create a product of, um, of those terms we see uh, down there in those basis polynomials. And the important thing is that once m equals j, then this shouldn't be part of the product. This is the only reason why we cannot do this with the normal prod function and maybe some mapping. We could have used a filter and a map and then prod, but, well, that would have been some work. So let's look at how this works. Now, this condition here, uh, if xj equals xk, is exactly that condition down there m uh, doesn't equal j, so in this case we just return the unchanged accumulator, right? Because this is not a term we should uh, add to our function. And otherwise we add this term that we need and multiply it with the accumulator. Now, the fun thing about this function is that you can again use it with partial function application. So you can generate a function like this, and then have a function which constitutes this uh, polynomial for the interpolation. And it works quite well for smaller values, but for bigger values the precision of Haskell floats is not that great, which uh, is the reason why there are a lot of rounding errors and the function becomes imprecise. Um, and for big values it's imprecise anyways because it's just interpolation. But yeah, this is how Lagrange polynomials can be built in Haskell. Okay, so let's look at the last exercise. For the last exercise, we want to create a fold on a new data type, which we call try. Uh, this try actually has another name called a prefix tree. Now, a prefix tree works like this. You encode words, like in this case, cool, car, and cat, as this tree. Now, you might see that, well, something interesting is happening here because we have a list of tries in our node. So, the important thing to uh, see here is, even though it's not shown in this example, um, a tree does not have to have two subtrees. It can have as many as it wants. It could have a million subtrees. Okay, 
By the way, this prefix tree is a very important data structure because it can be used in order to replace hash maps in a functional way uh, and still have a pretty good um, time complexity. But okay, that's, that's not that important for this exercise. What is important for this exercise is how such a tree is built. You can see that on the right. Okay, so what we want to do is a prefix traversal of, um, or a pre-order traversal, not a prefix traversal, of this tree. So we want to start with the first element and then just start with the first subtree we find, right? Or continue with the first subtree we find. Uh, you don't have to order anything. Just go through it in the order that is given in that list of subtrees. Right. And then you just go down until you, well, hit a leaf. And at that point, you should do this uh, pre-order traversal. So, the task is the following. Create a function fold try that folds the elements of a try in a pre-order traversal. Uh, down here we have the signature of the function again. So, the accumulator, which will be B, is the first element uh, of that function you give to fold try. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, so let's look at the solution for fold try. Now, since we have a list of subtrees, we can actually use another folding here. Uh, as I said, you should go through the um, subtrees in the order that they uh, happen in the list. And every time we hear this in the order of the elements, you can, well, basically always use a fold L. So what are we doing here? Well, of course, the case where we only have a leaf is not that important. We just apply this function f to the accumulator and the value x that is stored within the leaf. But if we have a node, something else is happening. Well, as I said, we have a pre-order traversal, meaning that we have to look at the element within the node first. So we do that by basically updating our new accumulator with this f uh, accumulator x term in this fold l term. And then we apply this um, f prime function here. And this f prime function is nothing but a fold try of f within this call. Now I have written out the accumulator and the t within this function just to make it more clear what f prime is. But of course, partial function application allows us to remove this acc and this t. But this is how to do it. This is how to do a pre-order traversal of, or a pre-order fold of a try. Uh, 